What is good people, Joni and Joe back this month with the King Games video for Duel Links. Once again I bring you a new Synchro deck from the latest event and new box and that is Fortune Ladies. With the Carly Carmine event we have been granted loads of new cards between unlocking her as a character, farming her, and also hitting the new main box. Another new fact of this video is that this is the first month for the new rank revamp in the game. As many of you know, the ranking process for Duel Links has changed slightly by eliminating the motion entirely until you are at Legend 2 or Legend 3. Because of this change, the latter has been chock full of different decks and players, now that it has been made easier for duelists to promote themselves. Personally, I despise the changes, as I found myself running into a whole bunch of cancerous stall and meme decks, but I don't want to make the video about that. I want to focus on the deck and the King of Games climb. Now for this video, and possibly future King of Games videos, I decided to put more duels than just a 5-1 streak. It's very difficult to showcase a deck if your 5 wins just happen to be lucky scoops or breaking opponents, so the videos will have more duels to show off along with the 5 win streak. Despite many attempts at streaming to hit King of Games, I couldn't manage it thanks to some magical curse that prevents me from dueling well on stream. Once I dueled off stream, however, I managed to hit a quick 5 win streak like it was nothing. I did save 4 to replays and they'll be at the end of the video before the deck list as always, but for now I do have some decent duels on the stream during my climb through Legend. Talking about the deck now, Fortune Ladies are an archetype revolving around spellcasters with attack values that change depending on their level. The deck received support somewhat recently in the TCG in the form of the Synchro Monster and two spells, Fortune Vision and Fortune Lady Calling. Just like they've done before, Duel Links has brought us some of these new cards to use while keeping some of the stronger ones unlocked. Sadly, the cards are split between the event and the new box, so if you're missing something from the event, you might be stuck waiting for it to come around again if you want to play the deck efficiently. The main core combo of the deck that we will utilize involves two cards being Fortune Lady Light or Pass and the spell Fortune Lady Calling. We also use the skill Time Passage in order to boost our Fortune Ladies by three levels, once per turn and twice per duel. Thanks to the brains in the DLM Discord, this core combo gets us our boss Synchro Monster along with drawing two cards. Thanks to the searching from Light and Calling, we thin our deck out by 4 cards at the end of the combo and gain a decent advantage. Now while I did a modified version of the combo, I'll go into it again later and explain it in detail when it comes up again. Aside from the combo, the deck has tons of level modulation ability thanks to Carly's skills and her Tuna Monster Pass. Because of this, the deck has a wide range of Synchro Monsters to go into depending on what levels you can generate on the monsters. Another key factor of the deck is the spell card you just saw, Fortune Lady Calling. This spell allows you to special summon a lady from the deck with a different name from one on the field. This spell is pretty much the main method of getting your synchro plays as it gets you an important special summon of your choice from the deck. Now we do have other methods of making synchro plays that you'll see later on, but the spell card is pretty much one of the most important cards of the deck. Unfortunately, it is a UR in the new main box, but if you max out Carly to level 35, You'll get Fortune Vision right there and it'll let you search any Fortune Lady card from the deck. Two callings can make this deck work pretty decently. Three is even better. The sooner you see it, the more plays you have. So to get your plays going, you want to see this spell as soon as possible. Now talking about the Synchro Monster, now that she's on the board, Fortune Lady Every is one of the strongest Synchro Monsters we've gotten in an archetype for a whole bunch of different reasons one just like the other fortune lady monster she has no attack it depends on her level but she starts off at level seven and her attack is 400 points per level so she starts off at 2800 attack which is pretty respectable and for a level seven that's pretty much like the highest attack value we have so far the other factor is she comes back at your opponent's end phase if she is in the graveyard as long as you banish a fortune lady from the graveyard. This can happen as many times as you want as long as you continually have fortune ladies in the graveyard. Because of this she's like so hard to kill unless your opponent on sealed tombs or banishes her. She's not done there however. Just like the other monsters every standby phase she gains a level and gets stronger but on top of that she banishes a face up monster on your opponent's field without targeting. This gets rid of like some most of the most problematic monsters in the meta right now from Desperado to Neos to Vendreds and 
everything in between. It's a pretty insane effect and all of these effects combined together make her one of the best synchro monsters in my opinion. There is ways to get around her. Um, unfortunately, you do have to wait until the opponent's end phase to bring her back. This does leave you open to OTK depending on what type of deck you're facing. So you want to get her out as quick as possible and have protection in your back row to make sure she stays alive. As you just saw, Enemy Controller is one of my favorite techs in this deck. Thanks to its tribute take effect, you can protect your Fortune Lady every from like harmful effects that would banish her or reduce her attack that would uh, threaten lethal. One downside that she has is that because she has no attack value, if your opponent uses effects that negate her effects, her attack will drop to zero. Same thing applies with like effects that will cut her attack in half. She technically has no original attack, so it goes straight to zero. Because the monsters have no attack value, you can't run World Legacies Clash to protect them like most decks do nowadays. If we could, it'd be amazing, but it wouldn't do anything to our opponent. It wouldn't even allow us to use it because um, we have no attack to lower. But as you see here, Every's coming back just by banishing monsters from the graveyard. And on your standby phase, she'll banish a card that your opponent has face up. Monster, excuse me. Uh, let me not say card because then that'll be beyond broken. But now that we're going into the combo here, uh, we can showcase it a little bit. It's not the beginning of the duel, but the way it works is still the same. What she'll do is uh, you'll get Fortune Lady Pass or Fortune Lady Light out, and then you use Calling to get the other one out. You use your skill to boost up Fortune Lady Pass to level 4, and then you'll use Fortune Lady Pass effect to banish light and decrease pass level by 1. This will leave her at level 3. Light's effect will go off, light will be banished and leave the field, and then you'll get to special summon another Fortune Lady from the deck. The card you always want to summon, usually, is water. Unless you need to make a specific synchro requirement like you just saw Scrap Dragon. But Fortune Lady Water will let you draw two cards immediately. And that will leave you with Pass at level 3, Water's level 4, and you'll have a level 7 synchro. That combo is pretty much the bread and butter. And you'll see it again here. Um, it is kind of complex. I know some people said they were having difficulty on learning it. But it's still a, uh, a good thing to learn. Uh, there's probably other plays you can make. But... Netting that combo on turn 1 is probably one of the best things in this deck. Um, as you'll see here, once again, enemy controller. I want to protect every, and if this is blue eyes, I do not want him to start discarding Stone of the Ancients and going off with Cosmo Brain and all that other nonsense, so we're going to stop that right away. Snipe Hunter will get banished right on my standby phase, and we're left to do what we want to do. Now, thanks to Time Passage being twice per duel, we can use it once to modulate our levels to get a Synchro play going, but then we can use it again to just get an attack boost on one of our monsters. Now, as you saw, Fortune Lady Every, she starts off at 2800, so if you use the skill, she'll go to 4000 attack, and if you use the skill after a turn, she'll go up to 4400 attack. That's pretty nuts, and that's going to pretty much get you over almost any monster in the meta right now so time passage is a pretty good skill compared to like level augmentation or any other skills that's gonna um, help you once again combos there um we're up to our king of games rank up streak now so all of these duels were for the king of games rank up now as you see i didn't activate fortune vision the continuous spell that's mainly because I'm running a specific tech in this deck, and that is Cockadoodle Doo. Because the deck revolves around that spell card, without the spell card, you pretty much can't synchro summon on an empty board. So we run Cockadoodle Doo. He special summons himself when you have an empty board, and then you'll normal summon whatever Fortune Lady you have that you can make a synchro play with, and you'll go from there. That's if you don't have the spell card Fortune Lady calling, but. If you have Fortune Vision face up like that, you can't use Cockadoodle Doo, so that's one of the hardest conflicts the deck has. We're still pretty early since the box has released, so there's plenty of room for improvement, but 
that's pretty much one of the best options we have right now. Now, as you saw that first duel, we faced Dark Magician and he probably had a slight brick. Uh, he only opened Rod and Magician's Navigation. He pretty much knew we were going to get over both his Dark Magicians pretty easily, so there wasn't much he could do in his scoop. Same thing here. Thanks to our Cosmic Cyclone from the draw two, we banished the back row card and we could just go straight for lethal with time passage on Fortune Lady Every. This five win streak is pretty swift. Um, I don't know if the opponent's bricked or if we just got lucky, like I said before. That's why I threw the extra duels in. But as you'll see here, when this deck opens well, it pops off. But if you don't have the chicken or Fortune Lady calling, um, it does run into some bricking issues. And if we have more copies of Vision, I think maybe we'll get them at Carly level 40. This deck will improve quite a bit. But for now, um, it has potential, but I don't think it's where it needs to be yet. So once again, the opponent saw every was going to come back. I would have banished one of his monsters, swung over the second, and he's back to square one. One of the other drawbacks in this deck is drawing your Fortune Lady Waters. Now, Fortune Lady Waters, you want to leave in the deck so you can special summon her with Calling or Light, and you can draw two cards. Opening her is terrible because then you have no way to special summon her from the hand and you can't draw cards. Now as you see here I do run a copy of Fortune Lady Earth. This was only in testing for the 5 win streak and I just happened to use it here but Earth I wouldn't say is like a staple card in the build. This could easily be another Fortune Lady win or a back row card that's going to help you. Drawing Earth just like water is pretty much a dead card, unless you find a way to tribute a dead fortune lady to summon it. But it's a nice big body if you get calling and you just want to have another big body on board to swing with. So that's why I just wanted to try it out. Fortune Lady Wynn, I didn't talk about her really, but she's the back row removal fortune lady. Um, when she's normal summon, she gets to pop back row cards equal to how many fortune ladies you have on the field. Because of this, you can't pop back row cards if your monsters don't equal the number of cards your opponent has. So that's why we still run two Cosmic Cyclone. I know you saw we were running two Forbidden Lance before. We were just experimenting with that, but that's another perfectly viable option for the deck to protect you from Treacherous and Kanadia. Anything that's going to disrupt your synchro plays is pretty bad. As you saw, that's the King Games rank up. Um, pretty simple as I said before but going through the deck three fortune lady lights it took me 6.5 million points to get all three copies but we got them one fortune lady earth as I said before you can easily replace that with another wind or back row card that's going to help you two chickens you don't want three because like I said there's that conflict with vision but you do get the synchro opportunity if you get him with wind or water or light with the skill so wind one copy um you don't want to see it too often, but two copies is a, another safe bet just in case you hate back row. Past is the Tuna Monster. You definitely want three copies no matter what. Light, you can get away with two copies, but past, I think you should definitely have three. Then you have Water. Um, you don't want to draw into her. Two cards uh, is pretty good, and uh, you want to leave her in the deck. And Fortune Lady Calling is the main spell card we spoke about already. Fortune Vision, we only have one level 35 Carly. Um, there's some sick combos that uh, we can do with this. Um, I'll put them in the actual description of the video because there wasn't a duel that I could showcase it, unfortunately. I know I did run into a few opportunities on stream, but I couldn't find those duels, so I'll put it in the description, the little spice uh, we use with Fortune Vision. Two enemy controllers, as you saw before, I want to protect every and two cosmic cyclones for back row. I run two every, so you can get away with one and then run Arcanite Magician. Arcanite Magician is a pretty good card to have, but I think every is just so good that uh, I need two copies. Star Eater, you can make with Econ take on Dark Lords and other high level monsters, but you can also modulate your levels to reach Star Eater. Our Mady's generic 5 uh, water plus pass is pretty good. Black Rose, that's a spicy combo we'll talk about, but it's a level 7, best level 7 in the game. 
And Scrapdragon, the new UR, is another generic level 8 that you'll run into in some situations. So, thanks for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I'll catch you guys next time.